Hi guys, welcome back. This should be really interesting. So, in this video, I am going to talk about sexual frustration. Kind of in general, right? Because I think it applies to many of us. Especially those of us who are on a sex sabbatical. <laughs> We're on leave from sex, right? <laughs> We're just like, hold up. <laughs> um, but for myself, no, I practice like periods of abstinence and celibacy just to clear my spiritual energy to cleanse myself and to balance my chakra. Um, and not only sexual abstinence, but just like abstaining from like intimate relationships, period, right? Like relationships, shall I say. Relationships being like, you know, with the partner. Um, and I'm heterosexual. So I have those periods where, I, you know, I do that and I feel very like there's their pros and their cons to it, right? I would say like the pros are something I already talked about before where I feel a sense of balance, um, peace, if anything, like... <laughs> A lot of people are disturbed in our society. A lot of people are stressed. They're anxious. Um, and much of that disturbance and anxiety often comes from, like, interactions they have with other people. Just other people infiltrating, like, their, their, their space, right? Their sacred space. And for me, that's important. It's important for me to create not only a physical space, but just, like, this this aura surrounding me, right? And sometimes when you're involved with people that don't, like, they're not aligned, first of all, with the same spiritual energy that you're aligned with. And they're just off balance, right? And, and not that we all don't have periods where we get off balance, because we do, that's a natural thing. But sometimes people don't even seek balance, right? They, they, they like chaos, and that's not healthy. So I, I intentionally find myself um, kind of refraining, right? Abstaining. I pull myself away from certain things, including sex and energies that I know can disrupt my, my balance, my equilibrium, my, my chakras. And so, also during this video, I'm going to go through this massive jewelry container here that I put together. I think I put this together last year, or maybe it was back in 2020. I don't know. The, the time just kind of runs together. Um, but let's just talk. Let's have a back and forth conversation. I invite you. It's one of those videos where I invite you guys to feel free to chime in. Um, this video... I have to admit, was inspired by a comment that I received on one of my, my videos. It was a video that I made when I first moved back to New York and staying in Brooklyn. And I was in the kitchen, right, of the space that I was staying in. And I was talking about black bulls, right, black male bulls in the video. And I noticed, okay, so the comment wasn't left on that video, but I went back to that video, giving someone else commented on that video. And I saw a dichotomy in my own energy displayed in the video about black bulls when I was sitting at the kitchen um, island counter versus a recent video that received a comment that inspired this video, right? So I'm gonna tell you guys what the person said. Now, granted, I ain't gonna front. I I end up I end up banning that person. I blocked that person because I didn't like his approach. Like it's all in how you say. It's not what you say. It's how you say things, right? And I consider myself a person that is able to take constructive criticism or a difference of opinion. So that's not the issue for me. 
this is one of my favorite pieces. Actually, I got this from um, the Pan-African Film Festival in L.A. I want to say it was 2020. That was the last one that I went to before the pandemic happened. I like this piece. So I'm just going to organize. I'm going to multitask. I'm going to organize my jewelry box, and I'm going to talk. And you guys can feel free to chime in. So he left, this guy left a comment, right? Um, on a video. And I read the comment. But I felt it was inappropriate, right? It was inappropriate for at least two reasons. One being that his tone, like, dude was, yeah, you're not going to come at me that way, right? And I knew he was white, and I feel like sometimes I do have less of a tolerance for white people who are disrespectful compared to black. Though I don't tolerate disrespect either way, but it's just something about, like, when white people be coming at me, like, nah, 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 you ain't about to do that, right? Not if I have control over it. And so, this is another piece I just got. And so he says, I can't remember the exact wording, right? But basically he says, oh, um, you like, telling me what I need to do. What? No, we, we don't operate like that over here, right? He's like, you need to stop being so mean in your videos. Um, and, and you need to consider people's perspective when they're telling you their stories. And then he goes and starts talking about his fucking, talking about his penis, talking about, oh, um, some, some, somebody suck his penis or whatever, his mixed penis, saying he's a mixed person. And it's just like, I guess at the point I was like, listen, why? Okay, I've, I've said this over and over again. I do not care to hear about your motherfucking penis, whether you're white, black, Indian, Hispanic. I don't care. Chinese, I do not care to hear about y'all fucking penis and i'll do invite you guys to share your perspectives on different um experiences as, as it relates to the topics that we're talking about like cuck holding and bdsm or whatever right but when you start talking about your actual fucking i don't care why do you feel that it's necessary for you to start talking about that right so he's being descriptive like in his comments saying um first call himself correcting me saying what i need to do talking about I need to listen and be nice and listen to people's story and stop discounting what they say. And then he goes into start talking about, oh, yeah, you know, some, somebody sucked off my mixed penis, mixed race penis. And, like, maybe I would have left the comment up if he didn't say that. But that was completely inappropriate. And then I think he started saying something on the lines of, like, him, um, him being a cuck hole or whatever. I, at that point, I really didn't care, right? You see how it works? Like, you're being disrespectful, like, I'm going to dismiss your comment. I'm going to dismiss you and your comment. I don't care, right? Um, but I have to say this, right? And this is kind of what inspired this video topic because the point in the beginning where he says, you need to stop being so mean, right? <laughs> And I'm like, am I mean, right? Sometimes I'll, I'll take a survey of myself when I'm called out on certain things, right? Because um, I'm very, I consider myself to be very self-aware and in tune. Um, and so, yeah, like when someone calls me out on something, right, that they notice about me, and he's talking about something that he's observed from watching my video about me being mean. He was like, yeah, just you need to like listen to people. Uh, basically, he's saying I should agree. No, so I have to say this, right? I disagree with that part because if I see that there's some inconsistency in what someone is saying or if it just sounds like it's bullshit, then I'm going to say it's bullshit, right? I'm not always discounting people's stories. There are many stories that I've read, you guys have seen this, where it's believable, right? And I address it, we talk about it in depth. I always present a non-judgmental attitude, though. I don't, because I'm not here to judge you guys. We're here to engage. Um, so I have to say, okay, I disagree with that part. Um, and I know what he's talking about because that actual video, that I was reading an email that I received from a, a guy. It was bullshit. I, I mean, you can tell bullshit when it's bullshit. It was bullshit, right? The guy who sent the email saw it. He saw my video response to his email. 
calling his ass out on his fucking lies. And he admitted to say it was a made-up story. It was fantasy. So there you have it. <laughs> like, I, I know I'm pretty accurate in, in my interpretations. Like, I'm, I'm pretty head-on, right? But to this guy's point who inspired this video, I have to say this, though, when he was saying about being mean. And I thought, and I was like, it is something I actually observed before I read that, right? <laughs> James is laughing. It's something that I actually observed um, within myself before I read that comment about me being mean, right? This is all the same comment. And I'm like, is it me or is it <laughs> frustrated, right? I started to think, right, contextually, like what's happening in my life and given I've been abstinent, sexually abstinent over the past year. And then I watch all of my videos, by the way. So, like, after I go live on Facebook, I record my videos live on Facebook, I download them from Facebook, then I premiere them live on YouTube. Like, I'm watching the live premiere on YouTube as it's playing. And I look at myself, right? Like, I really pay close attention to what I'm saying, how I'm saying it, my tone. This is something that I've noticed, like, recently. And I'm, and I'm making a comparison between my videos that I've made since I moved back to New York City versus the videos that I've made when I was out in Los Angeles. And of course, there is a difference. I don't wear this that much because this is pretty heavy. This is also, though, this shit is heavy as hell, but I might wear this today. Sorry, I don't know who's outside with some kind of machine, but it seems to be interrupting my freaking video. I hate that. So, yes, I have, I have to his point about me being mean, I have noticed there is a difference. Now, I would attribute that difference to a number of factors, right? Sexually frustration, sexual frustration being a part of it. And also, and this is my moment of truth, like I'm pretty transparent, I don't mind it. Um, but also, I just think the, cause I was talking about this yesterday and talking about when I did my Q and A video and talking about the differences between Los Angeles and New York and New York is a city that, yes, yeah, it's, it's like, it's edgy, right? It, it heightens your sensibilities. Um, it puts you on your toes. And so, yeah, it does have a direct effect, I would say on a person's mood. Um, that's why you see, like, New Yorkers typically have a certain kind of temperament, right? Um, kind of really, they call it aggressive, but I say it's more assertive, right? There's, like, a spectrum of assertiveness and aggressiveness. And I would say it's more assertive, but a little, like, hint of aggression a little bit, because that's how you get shit done. Um, wittiness, you know, and just bluntness, right? And just being very direct and straightforward. So I realized that even when I was out in Los Angeles, though, I realized that I definitely had those characteristics and I expressed those characteristics in my interpersonal interactions with people, even in academia, right, um, with my colleagues. And they've noticed it and they're like, oh, you know, you don't have to be so. And I'm just like, I'm very direct. Don't take it as though, like, I'm, like, harping on you and I'm trying to attack you. I'm just being very straightforward and direct. So I realized even though I wasn't in New York, I had moved to L.A. and I was living in L.A. for a couple of years. Like, I still had that edginess about me. Um, and that's just something I, I said, like, even my video yesterday when I was talking about L.A. versus New York. That's something that's probably really not going to change because it's like, you know, once you move to New York, you live in New York, it's just like you don't, you're not the same anymore. Just not the same. So I love these necklaces here. And here's my bull. So I realized that one day, you guys, I wasn't paying attention. I took off all my clothes, put it in the laundry basket, and I washed my clothes. And look, I washed this, and I washed part of the, um, what is this called? The horn? 
roll my eyes on those stories. They're terribly bad fiction writers. <laughs> they are right so you recognize that you empathize with me james like it's just come on you can do better than this you can tell this fantasy and my thing is listen if it's your fantasy then just say it's like hey you know i have a fantasy i would like to share it with you and i would like to get your perspective on it because this is the thing you guys email me now yes i opened the forum up and say okay you guys are free to email me, but let's be reminded. You guys email me. So whatever perspective I share is a perspective I share. And this guy, right, like I said, who inspired me to do this video in the comment, he's also like, oh, you would get more views and more likes if you were nicer and, and not so mean when you're uh, reading people's stories, right? And I'm just like... First of all, I'm not here for likes. I'm not here for views. I do this just for the sake of it, right? And I've said this to friends who are vloggers who do it for a living, right? And they have millions of followers and, and views and things like that. Okay, kudos to you. They've said to me, like, oh, I can show you how to get more views. I know how to get more views. I'm not after views. I do this. This is just like a hobby of mine, right? This is like a pastime. I realize I don't wear this that much either. But this is like, I do this for fun. So, but, yeah, to his point, though, about, like, the mean, yeah, I can see that because, <laughs> and I have to say, yes, I do think that is attributed to, like, just, you know, me being on this sex sabbatical, um, and not having sex because look, I'm looking at myself in the videos, right? And I'm looking at that video, particularly the one on Black Bulls, when one of the first videos I made when I went back to New York in 2020. And I'm just like, oh, my demeanor was just so softened. Um, it was very softened. It was less defensive or combative. Um, I was still direct in the video, but just the tone of my voice, right? And my delivery was much softer and sweet. And it was pleasant. It's pleasant for me to even watch, you know. And then I look at uh, other videos, like even more recent videos that I've made. And I'm just like, damn, I'm a beast, you know. I'm, a, I'm fiery in the video. Um, so I see it. I get it. I love these bracelets. So there, there's like jewelry that I wear on a regular that I keep outside of this um, jewelry box. Where is one? I like this too. So I just got this one recently. But yeah, being that that's an observation, I'm like, that's something I guess I can work on. I'll work on that, you know, being that I'm more mindful of it. Um, and like I said, it's not like it's a new observation I've made. I've seen that within myself before. Um, I just didn't care. <laughs> just didn't care, right? But, yeah, I have more to say about the sexual frustration. Because that's what this video really is about, right? I like this too. I'm not wearing this anymore. Um, I did wear this. I think I wore this to work. But, yeah, like, okay, so, and even, like, okay, in that video, right, that video we're talking about, about the black bulls, and my demeanor was more, like, soft, and, um, I was dating someone. I actually was with someone, right? <laughs> like, even in the video, like, you know, the place where I was at, I was with, we were, I was with someone, we were together. Um... And yeah, you know, sexually active, you know, so yeah, I think that that makes a difference, believe it or not, that makes a difference. Granted, you know, I can say like, you know, being abstinent, it kind of helps to cleanse my spiritual energy and make me balance. Um, but when I feel like also like I'm with someone that I care about, that person cares about me. Right, and you know, there's love exchange, there is intimacy, there's care, and there's like you know, physical touch like that does make a difference, I think, 
and my mood, right? Which it reflects upon my presentation. <laughs> Did you guys get to see? And it's often said, I remember like, um, I never wear this bracelet, y'all. I need to freaking pull this shit out and start wearing it. Only thing is like, you gotta be careful with these spikes. But I remember like, there was a kind of saying going around like in school, my high school, because there's how sexual promiscuity was very high in my school that I went to. And, you know, girls would joke with each other and say, you know, they can tell when you've got you some dick, right? Because you just present differently. Um, people, people can tell. You can tell when you have some sex. <laughs> I think that's funny, yo. You can tell. You can tell when a person is not getting any, right? Because it's like, damn, are you on your fucking period? Even guys, too. It's not just a women thing. But even guys, you can tell when guys haven't had sex in a while, too, because they be sexually frustrated. They be like bitchy, you know, and irritable. Um, yeah. And even though, like, you have gotten adapted to, let's say, the abstinence, you've adjusted to it and you've allowed yourself to realign your chakras and become more balanced and at peace with the current state that you're you're practicing in, you know, within that, that celibacy and that abstinence, you know, it's still, like, a part of you, I think, subconsciously that recognizes that, okay, you know, you're alone and that maybe you do crave intimacy and sex, right? And you've been going without. Um, and so, you know, it shows up differently. Um, you know, and when you're with someone you care about, you're having sex, even though you're stressed in every relationship, right? There can be stress in the relationship. I think, yeah, it does make a difference. So, I heard these were like trade beads, um, which I haven't worn these. These are kind of heavy. I haven't worn these that much. So, what's the solution? <laughs> Go out and have sex? Hell no. But it's funny though, as I was, I think this was, when was this, yesterday? I said to myself, yo, I'm about to unleash the beast. The beast is about to come out, okay? Um, because you do think, and you're like, why am I putting myself in this sexual prison? And I talk about this often with you guys about, you know, sexual freedom, expression. And it's just like, okay, you go without for so long. This was actually part of a, a, a talk, and I cut it out. But you go without for so long and you realize, like, life doesn't have to be this way. Like, why am I abstaining, right? And, of course, I'm reminded of why. Um, because it's necessary, I think. Um, but it's necessary to get that sexual healing, too. <laughs> Who is a living witness? Who's a witness? It's, it's necessary to get that sexual healing. this even in the work because I work with men they're all men on my ward at the hospital and you can tell like they're sexually frustrated we were talking about this in a treatment team meeting because of they become like more irritable and uh, you know they display aggression you know that's how men typically display like changes in their mood it usually comes out in the form of ag aggressive kind of impulses um and there's a close association between sexual impulses and aggression and so clearly a lot of those men like haven't had sex in a while because the unit i work on is more of a long-term stay unit they haven't had sex right you know not with a woman at least maybe with their hand but they haven't had that luxury of being able to release themselves physically and so they got a lot of pent up energy. And then me being the new female psychologist on the ward, <laughs> it's like, how do they let out their energy? Sometimes in the form of aggressive impulses onto me, right? They can't do it sexually. Some have, an, you know, 
I would say one actually, I won't say some, but one has acted inappropriately upon his sexual impulses towards me and actually grabbed my freaking breast, but not like grabbed it like that, which is more just like a soft, like gentle kind of touch, or right? kind of quick too. Um, he's more nonverbal, but he doesn't really speak that much English. And so that happened, and then, like, another guy, I was saying, you know, call me a bitch, right? It's just that this kind of energy, this aggressive energy um, being displaced, like, onto me because they don't have that opportunity. So it's interesting to see, like, yeah, it, it really shows up in many different ways. I love this. I haven't worn it lately, but I love this. I actually got this from my African friend. From the Ivory Coast, but I don't wear this that often. So oh, I was looking at this. These are my tongue rings, which I also don't wear. It's funny. It's crazy. At one point, I thought this was cute, but now I'm just like, I wouldn't wear this probably ever again <laughs> ever ever again i like the colors though but flowers mm, nah well, this i probably will wear i might take this out so i like to switch out my jewelry given that you know there's like a select bit of jewelry that i wear like on a regular basis and then the rest is kind of like just tucked away in this jar here so that's what i'm doing now i'm just kind of like sorting through some of this stuff and figuring out like what do i want to wear and switch out um but yeah it's like interesting I think a lot of you guys be acting out too because y'all don't get a chance to live out your fantasies and so your opportunity is to discuss it like on my lives <laughs> or in an email right um that you sent to me i can't remember where i got this from i think this is cosmetic jewelry though definitely don't wear that it's cute though i think i wore it once Cosmetic bracelets. Those are cute. Represent the Pan African. Love this one. There's a fist. There's another. I love it. So, yeah, I am going to, like, consciously make an adjustment to that. Um, see, I don't mind you guys pointing out things that you observe in me. But, yeah, I definitely had to, like, get rid of that guy because, no, you don't do that. First of all, you don't tell me what to do. You tell me what I need to do. I don't need to do shit. I don't need to do shit but stay black and die. I bought this from this woman who sells like paparazzi jewelry. I wore it a few times. This is my friendship bracelets. Uh, got that also from my friend. But I think I might go another year. I kind of like this abstinence celibacy thing. I do. Because, you know, sex is sacred. And I feel like we're going to have sex. The shit got to be right. Unfortunately, y'all men just becoming all incorrect with it, you know? Weak ass penis. Y'all have that wop. I don't know why I have this in my jar. I'm going to wear this more often too. This is a nice one. I might wear this one. 
just do that. these um i actually got these two from the same um shop in la in inglewood california i got this also from the pan-african film festival i think the same time when i got this this is malian of African jewelry. Yeah, I, I knew that story was fake because he was just like, the, the cities that he was saying and the things that he was saying, it just didn't make any freaking sense. It's like, oh, you know, his wife, ex-wife moved to Florida and I'm from Florida. And he's just like, oh, I lived in New York then I moved to LA. He's just like, you can come better than that. And the same guy, look, he follows up. I'm not going to read that email. That shit is long as shit, right? He followed up with another email in response to my video that I made. And he sent a picture of himself and this black woman. So this is a white man, right? I like this. But I definitely would not wear this to work because I wouldn't want broken this is cute I think I got these two together I like this so I'll probably have to wear it So there are levels of sexual frustration. Um, I would say on a scale from 1 to 10, I'm definitely nowhere near 10. Um, I would say I'm nowhere even near 5, right? Because the way I look at sexual frustration is that usually people who are like severely sexually frustrated, um, they do tend to be more aggressive, I think. And they also masturbate like a lot for me like i don't really masturbate i do masturbate but not often <laughs> um even with that you know and i don't really think about sex like that i'm more disciplined because i've gone without for a while like you know you, you learn to discipline yourself that's what it's really about the, the abstinence is also about like you know instilling discipline in yourself challenging yourself to refrain from things that you, you really can go without i like this one this is cute and so i don't think about sex like that or i remember i bought these earrings and i tried them on and i was just like first time wearing earrings in like probably over 15 years i don't wear earrings at all I'm going to like the African market and they be trying so hard to sell me earrings. I'm like, I don't wear earrings. I just don't. Not my thing. But I do have my ears pierced though. I have like four holes here. And I have, I think, one at the top on each side. I have my tongue pierced. I got my eyebrows pierced, my navel pierced. But the only jewelry I wear is necklaces and bracelets. Okay, how did this get on to here? It's just married on there. Alright, so we're almost at the bottom of this thing here. Almost done. 
Libra. I got this from that same African shop. No, I actually got that from this place. Um, um, Hollywood Bowl. Tells you what to do. What say? Stroke chest. <laughs> Me and my um, ex partner used to play games like that. All right, so that's it. So now I am going. I have a ring here, like a ladybug ring. All right, I'm gonna put. Oh no! I'm not putting that back on my hand. I'm gonna put. The piece of jewelry that I wear the least in this bucket here. Want to be in my video? Sorry, I cannot add you to my video, but what you can do is feel free to drop your comment below. If you have a comment that you would like to add, drop it below. I've already tried to add people to my videos and it was unsuccessful. So I just stopped trying to add people to my videos here on Facebook. Um, until probably I upgrade my phone. I am planning to do that though. Sometime soon. I'm going to get me a, I might get an iPhone. I don't know. Still up for debate. We shall see. You guys, I think are afraid. Like you guys are really scared to just like comment, just comment. But that's the thing. Y'all, y'all don't know how to interact appropriately. You don't know what to say. Um, y'all be saying the wrong shit and then that's how you get blocked and then you're no longer, no longer able to comment on my videos. So this is a nice one, but look what happened to it. It came unraveled, so. I like it though. Like some of these is just like, ah. Oh. Would love to wear them. I'm not really big on zodiac signs. These are the two pairs of earrings that I have here. I have this whole jewelry collection. I'm pretty dumb. I bought them, but I don't wear them. So these I actually want to start back wearing again. These, I think these are copper. Bracelets. Definitely going to start back wearing these. So I'm going to put these to the side. Because I just like the bangles. I like the sound of the bangles. <laughs> I love the sound of them. This, nah, I'm not going to wear this. The cosmetic jewelry, no. Not really my thing. So I'll put that back in first. I do want to wear my leather jewelry. BDSM bondage. Save that for a special time. But I do see like somewhere in my near future. I don't know how near. But I can see somewhere possibly in the year 2022. I, I feel it. Like I feel that... Love is near. And good good sex is nearby. <laughs> That's the thing though. When I find that person that I feel like comfortable with. Oh, we have fun. Because, you know, women, we like sex just as much as men do. Why not? So, I like to have fun. I like to throw down. These. I'm trying to remember that store in Inglewood. I got these from. I think I actually got all of these from that store. All four of these. I 
care or remember the name of the store because it's so unique, right? I know sometimes business owners, like, they want to be very, you know, they want to stand out and be unique, but you're so, you're so unique that people can't even remember the name of your store. That's useless, right? They want to tell other people about it. Can't even fucking remember it. Definitely gonna keep this out. Keep these out. These. I really wear this. I'm gonna start wearing it. they pinch my skin that's the only thing about these like ouch I think the same thing is for this a seashell bracelet here to deal with like frustration in general for me i like to take walks i obviously like to paint um it's like a redirection of the energy flow right if you're feeling like backed up you need to release um and it's also good to just like sit in your home just unclothed just naked right um, in certain like positions like that allow the energy to be released right like even in a, like even in a bent over position like um, doggy style position you know I like that position too not it's not just for sex but it's just for like releasing energy you know um, well one is abstinent so I'm going to keep these to the side because I'm definitely going to wear these this it's so heavy I only bring that out on special occasions I really like this one alright let's see I can put these back in here we can bring these out on special occasions chain right here. I like the way it's made though. It's cool, isn't it? Ew. Another thing, like, it may come off as though I'm like uh, mean or it's not really mean. I say it, it's like me just having low tolerance for like ignorant shit or disrespect. And I, I can see right through a lot of y'all shit that y'all be, you know, the way y'all be commenting and the messages that y'all be sending. Like a lot of men are hyper-focused on sex, right? And they claim that they want to lie and say, oh, it's not about sex. But if it wasn't about sex, then I know it's bullshit, right? Because they'll be like, oh, you know, I like your videos. I like this. But you only like the ones that are sexually focused. Hmm, what does that say about you? Right? Because I'm the same person in, in all of my videos, but you only watch the ones that are sexually focused. Like this one, right? Or if I'm talking about, um, I really love these. Wait. No, I'm not like so I'm keeping all of these out, the rest of these. Like I'm keeping this out. Cause I do wear this from time to time. I'm keeping these off. These, I love these. My bull and my African drum. I like this choker. I love all my jewelry. This, I'll put this up. 
but I really do like this one. And then there we have it, you guys. And I gotta find a time to wear it. I wanna get another one of these. I should have one for each wrist, right? I love the way it fits. Um, I don't know where I got it from. Maybe Hot Topic or some store. Feel free to share your comments below, you guys. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. I actually may take you guys with me to Brooklyn today. I am going to Brooklyn to celebrate MLK. All of these. This thing is heavy. This is my jar of jewelry. I'm glad that you guys were able to watch me sort that and i'll catch you guys later Ooh. oh oh smooches <laughs> oh this is the position i was saying so just like in this position but naked right in the what do you call this position i know this is like a special yoga position like full salute or something but you're naked, and this is like a way to release energy. Um, because, like, obviously the back side is open. The orif orifices of the anus and the vagina are open. And being open is a good position. This position, or even, like, on the back, this is for women, obviously. To help release the energy and I burn incense. I was doing this actually yesterday in this position. You know, it's like, <sighs> and it's like, it's a lubricating position too. So it helps to stimulate. Um, I'm about to end this video. I'm going to catch you guys in the next one. Drop your comments below. <laughs> this was fun.